Good morning, everybody. And welcome to this Eucharist. The entrance antiphon. Drop down dew from above, you heavens, and let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth be opened and bring forth a savior. This mass is offered for the departed soul of Rosita Luzami. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our unworthiness, present ourselves as his unfaithful servants who need his mercy. Let us recall to mind our sins and ask the Lord to pardon us. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my saver, servant David that thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pastures and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you whenever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them so that they may dwell in their palace without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also revealed to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise you up <clears throat> and all the heirs after you sprung from your loins and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Pastoral Psalm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever, Forever I, will I will sing the, the goodness, goodness of, of the Lord. Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. 
Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I shall sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, forever I will confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I shall sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Christ, Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee in Nazareth, called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And all coming and coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I have no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called holy, the son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father. 
Father Royal and myself, we have divided our work when we have to set for the Mass. He usually does the PA system and I do the other rest of the things. And we usually start this process at least an hour before the Mass. And we discuss things, we talk. Today, as he was setting things, he asked me, do you know Father Perfecto? I said, are you talking about me? <laughs> so this is how we set the altar, we set for the Mass, we set for the house of the Lord. And we are talking about house of the Lord, today's first reading as well as the gospel reading. King David had become the successful king and even now is recognized as the most successful king in the Israel's history. The people of Israel were nomadic. They would move from place to place with their tents, but they always carried with them the Ark of the Covenant. And wherever they pitched their tent, there is a place where they would also have a tent for the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant. Even if they were exiled or they were taken in captivity, they would always take it with them. So this was or this had been their life pattern. And now King David had become successful. He had overruled or overthrown all the other rulers and thus they have come to a spot where they were settling themselves. So King David had already built a beautiful palace for himself. That is what we read in today's first reading. And from his palace he sees the Ark of the Covenant or the tent. And he says to himself, I am living in a beautiful house and my Lord is being housed in a tent. This is not just. So I will build a house for the Lord. And then he goes to Nathan, his priest or a prophet. And he discusses with him and he says, go ahead, it's a good thought. And after that, the Lord reveals to his priest that you should convey this message to David. You're not going to build a house for me but I will make my house in your dynasty. A beautiful thought for us to reflect when we are preparing ourselves for the mystery of incarnation to be celebrated on the Christmas day, the house of the Lord. David wanted to build a tent for the Lord outside. The house which he wanted to build for the Lord was outside. But the Lord says, I will build my house in your house, in your family, in your dynasty. And that house will never have an end. The king from your dynasty will live forever and his kingdom will be forever. And that is what we read in the gospel reading. The house of David, a king would be born and his kingdom will have no end. Exactly what David had heard when he wanted to build a house for the Lord. Building a house outside could be compared to all the external things which we are getting ready with to celebrate the Christmas. We are making the preparations for the Lord to come from outside. And it is a good desire like David. But at the same time, the Lord is conveying to us, let me come during this Christmas time into your house into your heart, into your family. So prepare 
for that coming. And there are different ways by which we can prepare our hearts, our houses, our families for the Lord's coming. Because he wants to pitch a tent within us. He wants to make his house within us and in our families. We can keep ourselves holy and pure in the state of grace, one way of preparation. We can break the barriers of differences or misunderstandings of conflicts in our families, come together as one family and allow the Lord to be born in that family another way. Reaching out to others who are in need could be another way of preparing for the Lord's coming. Let us reflect for these few days remaining for us for the Lord's coming as how I am preparing to house the Lord, to receive the Lord. Let us pray for the graces that we may prepare our hearts in a very special way and receive Him in our hearts. Kindly rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With reliance on our good and gracious God, we bring our prayers to Him. For Pope Francis, may the Lord bless him in his zeal and joy for the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For our elected officials, may the Holy Spirit conform their hearts to charity and justice as they make their governing decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering the harshness of winter, may the Lord in his infinite mercy ensure they have adequate shelter and food for their tables. Let us pray to the Lord. For all gathered here today, may the grace of discernment help us fulfill God's plan for each of us. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they soon come face to face with Jesus their Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. For healing for those who are suffering from this pandemic and for their caregivers, we let us pray to the Lord for the special intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Rosita Luz Amy. For this we pray to the Lord. And for those prayers that you hold in the silence of your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayers as we strive to know your will and follow the plan you have carved out for us. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father, May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming, and proclaim his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we, we eat this bread and, and drink, drink this cup, cup we, we proclaim, proclaim your death, death, O Lord, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vasha, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in the mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion and Diffin. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel.
Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, trust in Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Many of us are wondering what the Catholic Church is doing or the higher-ups are doing to get the Mass into the Church. And um, <clears throat> Bishop Vasha has sent to us a bulletin or, a note or information, and I would like to read, them, read that to you. Brothers, that is meant for us, priests, here is the summary and then an opinion message from the Catholic Church Conference, CCC. The observers at the hearing noted that both, side, both sides made the usual arguments. The sense was that the judge was sympathetic to the argument of the state, but seemed to recognize that the courts had supported the argument of the church. The judge seemed to think that the concessions given to the church outside worship made the case different than Colorado or New York. A ruling is to come on Monday and, Bishop is putting, in, putting this in synthetic, pessimistic me, I would guess that he will uphold the level of shutdown declared for California based on science, while at the same time, assiduously avoiding any actual science about the safety of our churches. We shall see, but at this point, I am much less hopeful than I was on Friday. Here is the comment opinion on the liability of opening without permission. The, Cat the, the California Catholic Conference Public Policy Committee asked and received some clarification from Steve Green, that is CCC attorney, California Catholic Conference, regarding liability issues if pastors offer indoor worship without approval of the state or county. The bottom line is that the leader holding the indoor service is liable for breaking the law as would anyone attending. However, the likelihood of actions against attending parishioners would likely not be taken. But there is the consideration of notifying parishioners that they, would, that they could be violating a public law by attending indoors. Your local politics and secular media could choose to make it a rather negative story. So this is uh, what we received yesterday. Uh, I have the bulletins on a small teapoy there. Uh, you could grab one bulletin because it has all the details uh, and the schedule of our Easter, sorry, Christmas celebration. On the left hand side are the masses, on the right hand side are the confession schedules. So you could grab one with you. Uh, and that will help you to know the schedule of Christmas. I would like to thank every one of you for all your prayers, especially for one another during this time of pandemic and all the help which you have been giving and especially sending in your plate collection regularly, even by mail. Thank you so much and may God bless you. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you and enjoy the beautiful sunshine.